Soho Parish Primary is running a whole school project on sustainable transport. It's a hot topic, especially for a school located in the heart of London. The staff have shelved the regular timetable for two whole weeks and instead will be teaching the curriculum by looking at transport sustainability issues. They've called the project Every Journey Matters. Sustainable transport isn't on the surface an easy concept to get across to primary age children and we've had to think really quite hard about how we could do that. Good morning everybody! Go, go, go. We chose to do it over a fortnight because we felt that we could get in depth into a lot of the areas much more effectively by making it a two week unit rather than a single week. We started off the fortnight by bringing in a drama group, a, a, a theatre and education group, who made a very, very interesting presentation for the children. The perfect temperature for life. The units that we're using were written in conjunction with a group of teachers working in classrooms who trialled them last year and they've been slightly modified. So all these cities are trying to make their transport systems more sustainable and they've got lots of good ideas and could we use any of these ideas to make London more sustainable like this? I was invited by Transport for London to write some learning materials for children in junior schools that would enable them to explore issues of sustainability. Sustainable transport in particular underpinned the project but obviously environmental sustainability as well. We used some funding to bring experts in and one of these was a, a very interesting man who cycles into the school on his penny farthing and gives children rides and that's an experience I think they'll never forget. We all know bikes are fun and at your ages of course they're fun but in the end the bicycle is a wonderful means of transport you can see how engaged the children are in the issues and in the work that they're doing. They're absolutely passionate about it. Would I ever manage to get round the world on one of those? You might need slightly longer legs than the ones you've got at present because that distance is too big for your legs. The way that we've organised the fortnight in terms of the timetabling, we've taken all subjects really apart from maths and PE off timetable and all the other subjects have been integrated into the project. Younger children have been learning about about wheels, about the history of the bicycle, about different forms of transport. The older children, the year sixes, have really got in depth into a study of climate change and its uh, causes and effects and what can be done about it. So, year two, what we're going to be doing today it's going to be designing our own go-karts, which later on in the project we're going to be making as a little model. Here, where it's set. Can you draw that? We're doing top view and side view of go-karts. I'm colouring them in and we're going to make them. This is the side view and this is the top view. What I love about doing a project like this is that the children get loads from it. I think they learn in a really rich context and um, they get really excited about doing it and they go home and they tell mum and dad about it and uh, they're able to talk about a topic in a little bit more depth than you would otherwise where you're trying to rush through certain things when you're trying to teach in the normal way. Because the side view, all you see is that line the two wheels, do you see the wheels at the back? A little bit, don't you? Like With year two, we, we decided to use a book called Wheels by Shirley Hughes, and it actually has all kinds of different vehicles with wheels that the children would be um, familiar with, like roller gate, buggies, bicycles. And the idea to design and to make the go-kart came from the fact that the main character gets given a go-kart that his brother makes for him.
we're when? working on a transport to see how they travel around to get to school and to get to other places. In Year 5 today, I've asked them to, do, to undertake some research about different um, cities in the world that have started to use sustainable forms of transport. And what they've been asked to do is to read and understand what is going on in those cities. So then they can think about whether those forms of transport would be useful in London and would they be able to be used in London. The place we're researching is called Karl and it's in Germany. They use um, bikes a lot and they go in um, um, rickshaws a lot. Which are rickshaws are like, um, like a, a small, small sort of bus which they drive around and it has um, a small engine and some of the buses have, have clean bicycles. fuel. I like your it is, it is a cool place to live. A spirit of genuine inquiry and collaboration, I think, is terribly, terribly exciting and you see that in all the work that the children have done. What did you do at school today? I rode a penny farthing. An unforgettable, if slightly nerve-wracking experience for the staff, it provides an opportunity for the children to connect physically with what they've been learning mentally about the history of the bicycle. designing sustainable forms of transport for the Olympic 2012 Games in London and thinking of how the athletes can travel to and from the Olympic villages and um, how the rest of the city um, can travel much more easily so that it doesn't get too congested and thinking of ways to help to disable travelling so that we don't just make it everybody has to ride a bike because lots of people are disabled and they can't ride. I was appointed as mayor today for my team and my responsibility is organising everybody's job and telling them basically what to do. Sustainable transport means um, transport which doesn't harm the planet and doesn't give off emissions which is greenhouse gases and doesn't burn fossil fuels. And is it using sustain, a sustainable form of um, fuel? Well, putting on anything like this requires work and planning, and planning is absolutely key. And what we did was to entrust the planning of the fortnight to two teachers who are absolutely passionate about doing it. And they put in a lot of work, it has to be said. They've really had to anticipate all the snags, all the hitches, all the things that could go wrong, all the spaces that will be needed, all the timetabling issues. And I think that's crucial. I think unless you did that, it wouldn't work. What I think is difficult is how long it takes to plan and to organise it. In that sense, it requires quite a lot of um, time outside school for the preparation of all the resources. One of the things that we've done was to get a, a cycle trainer to come in and work with the children and to, to help them to develop safe cycling skills, which is really, really important anywhere, but particularly in this very busy and built up area. The children cycle out of the school gates into Shaftesbury Avenue, round Piccadilly Circus, down Piccadilly, and off to uh, St James's Park. I like cycling because um, it's not like cars either polluting. It's it's good for the environment and also it's good and it's good for your and it's good for strength. I think the government should put up posters that um, say cycling is good for you, and then they really like have nice pictures, and so people encourage to cycle a bit more. Cycling is a sustainable form of transport and it's really good because the only fuels it use are your, is your energy that you put into it. It's also really, really fun. Whoa! 
back at school, Year 2 are sustaining the fun by racing the carts they designed earlier. Why do you think your dad's not working, Sienna? Because there's no straw. And what will happen if there's no straw? Look at the axle. It the axle won't turn, will it? It's the final day of the project, and Year 2 have been invited to see what Year 6 have been learning about sustainability. And they're quite fast, and polar bears are quite heavy. Global warming can affect almost anything, animals, plants, and especially the environment. Rivers in Australia and China have been affected. All the fish have died because the waters are turning acidic. Every class will go round and look at the work of the other classes and children in each class will have an opportunity to present their work to others and show what they've done. What they've done. Parental involvement is something that Soho Parish does well. Now it's the parents' turn to have a look at sustainable transport through the eyes of their children. We live in central London, so it's, um, we see an awful lot of traffic. And um, I think we could do with a little less. And it would be nice for certainly Jonah and, and his sister Violet to, to be able to cycle to school every day. It's a cardboard base, wooden wheels, wooden axle with a stick on it. I think they need to know about any kind of um, present day issue, really. I mean, teaching, the sooner you start, the sooner they know. And at the end of the day, they're the ones going to be making the decisions in not so many years, really. We have a problem, a worldwide problem. It's not the fault of one person, it's the fault of the entire world population. This problem is global warming. A few of us uh, got together over coffee this morning. We were talking about the whole project, which is really fantastic, and it's really important that they're doing this about sustainability. Slightly worried they might be terrified <laughs> in that you know they think they're going to die or be flooded or you know children live for the moment so it's very important that they know these messages but sometimes I think they might not sleep at night but I think it's generally a good thing. I would say make issues of sustainability central to the curriculum it should be an integral part of children's learning not a tag on and this is an opportunity to really be creative, and I think we could do with a little more creativity. The children are excited that they're talking about sustainability, but I think the indications are that it's been a great success. <laughs>